Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a reading vlog, but it's going to be a little bit of a different kind of reading vlog. In the past, I've done reading vlogs where I take you over the course of multiple days or weeks sometimes, which means that it is a very long process. But this summer, I've sort of been having a little bit of a busy summer and I've been reading very sporadically. And so I think I haven't been able to put up reading vlogs in the way that I would like to. So today I'm going to try something a little different and that is going to be me just taking you along a single day of my reading. And we are going to see how this goes. I do have a couple of things to do besides reading today, which is why I thought maybe today would be a good day to do this. I am going to be packing up books for my move, which will be a process that requires a lot of deliberation, I am sure. So that is one of the reasons why I decided to do this today. And we will see how this sort of experimental video goes. So I'm starting off, it is the morning, I'm just starting off with a cup of coffee and I will see you in the next clip. So I am back and we are once again doing an experimental sort of clip because I am just going to get ready for the day and do my makeup while I'm updating you on some things I've been reading because I was planning on doing it in the intro and then for some reason I completely forgot that I had read and had reading updates. I think moving has really sort of frazzled my brain. But anyway, I'm going to update you now. So I know in my summer TBR, I did say I wanted to read more short stories. And I know I said I wanted to read a lot of things in my summer TBR that haven't really happened. But I figured since I haven't really been sticking to that TBR, the one thing that I can do is read short stories. Even in the midst of moving, I think I can manage a 20 page story. I had plans to read maybe a short story a day, but then that didn't really go very far. But I did start, which is the first step, and I started with Nikolai Goggle's The Overcoat, which is probably a short story that I've wanted to read for the longest. And it's pretty much just because I was in class one day and my professor talked about it and he just made it sound like such a great story. I also really wanted to read it because Nikolai Gogol, of course, is just one of the great Russian literature writers. Dostoevsky is quoted as saying, there is Gogol in all of us or something of that nature. And so Gogol is a writer that I have wanted to read and the overcoat was sort of on my radar. And so I did read it and I did really, really enjoy it. It follows this man who is a clerk in a government office in St. Petersburg and his life is sort of very routinized. Is that a word routinized? It's very, it's composed of a routine. He goes to work every day, he comes home, he has the same dinner and it's sort of described as that he doesn't really, that he doesn't really have a very, I don't want to say fulfilling, but his life is sort of just very mechanical and another aspect of it is that his co-workers don't respect him, they don't treat him very well, they make fun of him, which already I think shows a lot of what Gaga was doing with this short story I think particularly with the scenes of them making fun of this clerk. It just shows like a fundamental lack of human kindness and just human decency, which is something that I also notice in Dostoevsky's work. And so I can sort of see the inspiration there. And there was one passage in particular that I wanted to read that had to do with this issue of just human kindness or the lack of human kindness. It's sort of long, so I'm gonna start sort of in the middle of it. And it says, only when the joke was really unbearable, when they jostled his arm, interfering with what he was doing, would he say, let me be, why do you offend me? And there was something strange in the words and in the voice in which they were uttered. Something sounded in it so conducive to pity that one recently appointed young man, who, following the examples of others, had first allowed himself to make fun of him, suddenly stopped as if transfixed, and from then on everything seemed changed before him and acquired a different look. Some unnatural power pushed him away from his comrades, whose acquaintance he had made, thinking them decent, well-mannered men. And long afterwards, in moments of the greatest merriment, there would rise before him the figure of the little clerk with the balding brow, uttering his penetrating words, Let me be, why do you offend me? And in these penetrating words rang other words, I am your brother. And the poor young man would bury his face in his hands, and many a time in his life he shuddered to see how much inhumanity there is in man, how much savage coarseness is concealed in refined and cultivated manners. And God, even in a man the world regards as noble and honorable. And there I can see some similar themes that Dostoevsky also writes about, just for the capacity for humans to be so cruel to one another, even though we are all humans. One of my favorite Dostoevsky quotes is, I'm going to misquote it precisely, but it is when Ivan says that tigers can only bite and gnaw or something of that nature but human beings are the only ones that can be so artistically cruel because we are creative with how we do it and that might actually be in the context that my professor brought up the overcoat because we were reading 
the Brothers Karamazov in that class and the overcoat came up. So maybe this is just something that my professor has said and I am just regurgitating it. And if so, consider this me citing my sources. But I just wanted to say that that quote reminded me of that quote from Dostoevsky. Aside from the aspect of just the fundamental lack of human kindness and decency that we see in this short story, another thing that I really just thought was interesting was just the figure of this clerk in general. I think the characterization is done very well for it being a short story. I think even though we are not inside the clerk's head, we really get a lot about his just consciousness and just his motivations in a very short amount of time, which I always think is sort of impressive because I always don't expect much from short stories and a lot of you maybe have read amazing short stories that are just like, are you kidding me, Valerie? You don't expect much from short stories. But the reasoning is, is just that I never think that enough can be said in the amount of pages that you have. I like very, very long books. My favorite book is Les Miserables. I love George Eliot who writes huge clunkers. Charles Dickens also writes clunkers. My favorite authors all sort of write very long, long books. And so I'm always hesitant to believe that a short story can make me feel what those books feel. And so when a short story does characterization really well, like in The Overcoat, I'm always very impressed. And so I do think Goggle did a fantastic job just with really showing us the life of this clerk in a short amount of pages. One more sort of aspect of the plot that I do want to touch on a little bit, and I think that's all I'll say because I don't want to spoil it, is the overcoat aspect, which probably is important because it is titled The Overcoat. But basically what happens is this clerk one day is walking through the streets of St. Petersburg, and it is a very cold day, and he feels that his coat is worn out, and so he feels the wind sort of ripping through his very tattered old coat that is another thing that his co-workers make fun of. And so he goes to get his coat mended. The tailor says, I can't mend it, you need a new coat. And the coat is a lot of money, so it requires time to save the money to procure this coat. And so what happens is the clerk sort of endows this coat with a meaning that goes far beyond just the coat. It sort of becomes his purpose for living almost in the way that it's written. Just everything is about this coat. He's doing everything with the coat. He'll walk by stores and look at coats. He'll think of coats and everything sort of is endowed with this new purpose, which I mean, I know in the story it's just a coat, but I think just the aspect of having something to work towards is something that's very relevant and universal. It might not be an overcoat, but I think just endowing things with importance that goes beyond the actual importance of that thing, if that makes sense. This coat becomes the new thing in his life to work towards, and he endows it with so much significance and purpose. It almost gives his life purpose. I don't really want to say those words, but that's sort of, I think, what it does in his consciousness. It gives him just a new reason to work and to live life and something to work towards, pretty much. It gives him a goal. And I, it sort of made me just think, and I don't know if I've just been in a very reflective mood because I am moving. I'm in a sort of weird in-between stage of my life. I'm starting a new job. I'm moving state. I'm becoming independent independent because I was in college, which is sort of like an in-between independence, but now I'm like moving out with an adult job and all of that. And so I don't know if it's just me that's just being very reflective, but it just made me think about the tendency to always have to be working towards some things. Having something to work towards really can sort of drive you in itself and it sort of goes beyond just having that thing and it becomes about the process to get that thing, if that makes sense. And so I was reading another book, People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, which I know we're talking about Goggle, now we're talking about Emily Henry, but I just wanted to say because I did notice this in this book. And the main character is sort of going through a rough patch in her life and part of the reason is that's given is because she's run out of things to achieve. She's achieved everything she wanted. She has her apartment in New York. She has her job. She has this and this, all these career successes, everything that she was working towards she has and I think her best friend sort of says you need something new to work towards or whatnot and it just made me think just about that phenomenon about always having the thing to work towards you know you graduate high school then you graduate college and you get a job and then you get a promotion it's always sort of just progressing but it made me sort of think about the need for something deeper than that because when you read the overcoat and there's this clerk that puts his whole entire life purpose into getting this coat you read it and maybe as readers we're like it's just a coat but then at the same time it's just a promotion it's just a graduation it's just this it's just that i think all of those things when you boil down to it can sort of just be like the overcoat the difference is just the importance that we endow in it and i think just 
combined with the lack, again, of human kindness and just decency that we see, I think the alternative would be just things like human kindness and human decency and human connection as sort of being what's necessary for life. It is very sad um, in some lines. I don't want to say in what context in this short story, but it is just said that no one visited this man, no one cared about this man, no one thought he was important. And so it's just very sad to read. I don't know. Again, maybe I'm just in a very sort of reflective mood just because I'm in this like transition period of my life. And I guess being in this transition period in my life has made me question the very meaning of life itself. I don't know, but I think it's just a lot to think about. Just again, those things we work towards. Maybe it's not an overcoat, but it just made me think about that, especially just in the way that it's written. I think it does convey a sense of just universal human experience, even the line that I am your brother. I think it implies the connection that humans have, even though humans may again be unkind to each other. And so these experiences are human experiences, if that makes sense. I feel like the more that I keep talking, the more it just gets off the rails. And so I'm going to stop here. I am also planning on reading How Much Land Does a Man Need by Tolstoy today. And so I will probably get back on here and update you on that. And I will see you in the next clip with more reading updates or with packing books. I'm not sure which. We have reached the packing books section of this vlog, which I will say is the part that I have the least hope for. I feel like this is going to just be a very difficult section of this vlog for many reasons. Number one, I am moving, but I'm not like moving with a moving truck or anything like that. I'm not driving to my new location. It's too far to do that. And I don't have any furniture. So getting a moving truck is just too much for the purposes of what I'm doing. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking two suitcases with me on my flight and then I'm going to have a couple of boxes shipped to me once I'm there. And so I need to be very strategic about the amount of books that I take because I can't take them all. So pretty much books that I feel like I just need right now. And you probably are thinking, how many books can you fit in your two suitcases and your backpack? And a lot. I'm an expert at this. I have been going back and forth between states for college for the past four years with the exception of COVID. And when I tell you that I have transported like 30 books in my suitcases alone or just like 15 books in my backpack and put that on my back at the airport, I have done it, it has happened, and so I have a lot of hope that I can fit a lot of stuff in my suitcase. But with that being said, we're just going to start. This is like a very long intro. What I'm looking at right now is just a chaotic pile. So we are going to start. I see, first of all, three Shakespeare's, As You Like It, Midsummer Night's Dream, and Romeo and Juliet. Um, I might want to take a Midsummer Night's Dream or Romeo and Juliet. Um, I'm not sure. As you like it, I just read, so this is not really a priority right now. Two that I do want to take. The first one is Borderlands La Frontera by Gloria Anzaldúa. And I want to take this just because I want to keep all of my theory readings with me, just in case I'm working on something and need that book. I find that when it comes to just having physical books on hand, you can pretty much always find the Project Gutenberg of classics, so it's not as necessary to have those. But if you need a quote from literary criticism or a book on theory or an academic book. You can't find that on Project Gutenberg, I don't think. I think it's hard. Sometimes you can find academic books for free online, but it's a hit or miss. And so those are the books that I sort of need to have with me because I own the book. I don't want to rebuy the book. And so Borderlands is going with me. Another book that I'm probably going to take is I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter. I started this in like January? January? Oh my gosh. Hopefully not January, maybe like April, but I have not finished it. It was just that my semester took a turn and so I didn't have time. The Love Hypothesis might be one that I take as just a book that is my favorite that I kind of want to reread. I've sort of been itching to reread it, but that'll be a maybe. The Hound of the Baskervilles and the Valley of Fear. I have not read this. I've not read any Sherlock Holmes ever. Maybe I would like to. I'm sort of just creating a maybe pile and then we'll reevaluate. I have The Bedford Companion to Shakespeare, which 
maybe I might need this. I don't know. It is sort of one of those literary criticism books that I said, again, I might need this one. I have less of an inclination to think that I'm going to need, but I'll put it in the maybe pile and we'll just see how big it gets. And more Shakespeare's. I have Hamlet, Othello, and King Henry IV Part 1, none of which I feel like I immediately need. If I need to like look up a line or something, I can get it from soldiershakespeare.com or whatever that website is. And I just read them, so I'm probably not going to read them anytime soon. Ooh, here's a stack that actually makes sense. I have a stack of the Brontes. I have Jane Eyre, Agnes Grey, the professor, and the tenant of Wildfell Hall. Um, I might want to have my original copy of Jane Eyre with me just for sentimental reasons, but actually that might be not a good way to go because I have a lot of sentimental books, but we'll just put it in the maybe pile for now. Next up, I have James Joyce's Dubliners might want to read it. I've read a couple of stories in here, but not all of them. I have two Wheel of Time books, which Sarah, if you're watching, I have New Spring and The Dragon Reborn. And actually I have the one that you gave me, Sarah, which is, I forgot the name, Lord of, Lord of Chaos. I'm looking at it, but it's too far for me to get, but I'm not going to take these with me. I'm sorry, Sarah. This is a test of our friendship and I'm clearly failing, but mainly just because this is book three. I think that's the earliest book that I have. And so if I start the series, I definitely don't need the third one immediately because it's going to take me a long time to read them. And so these will be ones that I might call my mom and ask her to send them to me when I need them, but not now, not in this like initial mood. So this is like a detective slash crime stack. Agatha Christie, Sue Grafton. The Big Knockover This might might be one that I actually want to take with me by Dashiell Hammett because I haven't read it. More Agatha Christie, Ross MacDonald, Raymond Chandler, Walter Mosley, Edward Anderson, and then more Agatha Christie. In terms of all these, I don't think I need any immediately. I've read them all pretty recently. I think I haven't read some of the books in this Christie sort of collection, but I don't need that right now. And then, oh my gosh, where is the Maltese Falcon? That is important. I have a couple more crime books that I'm actually just gonna get. For a second, I thought I had lost the Maltese Falcon and it was a moment, but I didn't. I didn't, which is good because that would honestly, okay, would it be a tragedy? I mean, get it together, Valerie. That's like not in the grand scheme of things. Would that have been a tragedy? But it would have been sad. Um, I love this book. I'm taking this book with me both because I'm working on a project related to this and because I just need it. There's that. Another one is the Dash the Dashiell Hammett Continental Op. That's not what it's called. The Continental Op by Dashiell Hammett. Again, um, this book is kind of sticky, which is a little concerning. I don't know. This is just a used paperback, but I'm probably going to take this. Then I have Double Indemnity and Cotton Comes to Harlem. I love both of these, but I don't need them right now. Two more that I really love, but I probably don't need right now is The White Tiger by Jan Patsia. Not, no, no. The White Tiger by Erebin Diga and Disgrace by Jan Patsia. Two that I, again, really love, but I don't think I need them right now. I don't think, no, oh no, have to be firm here. Firm and in control. I don't know. The next pile that I have is, I think, like nonfiction slash literary criticism. I don't really know. First, I have Evolution as a Religion by Midgley, right? Yes, Midgley. Although this is one of those academic books that I was talking about earlier, I don't think I'm going to need this particular one. So I'm just going to leave it for now. Um, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. I love it, but I don't need it. The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin is one that I have wanted to read for such a long time. And I always like want to just reference it when I work on things, but I never have is the problem. And I think Origin of Species is one that I can get on Project Gutenberg pretty easily. So I don't think I need it right now. I have like a Spanish workbook that I don't know why I bought if there are so many free resources on the internet, but I just wanted a book, I guess. I don't know. But I have that. I don't think I need that. The Souls of Black Folk by Du Bois, which I think is just one of the best collection of essays I've ever read. But do I need it? Maybe. I don't know. I'll just sort of put it aside. Um, The Undercover Economist by Tim Har Harford. Does it say Harford? Yes, Tim Harford. I got this when I was on an economics kick and I haven't read it. Probably if I haven't touched it in the past like four years, I probably won't need it in the next three months is sort of the mindset that I need to have. For economics, I have read and I liked, but I don't think I need to take it with me. Common Sense Economics, which is a book that my high school teacher had us buy, which actually I think it was like a very good introduction. I think like the fundamentals of sort of just economics are really important 
to learn at that age maybe. I'm glad I have it and I was introduced to it but I don't need it. Um, The Discarded Image by C.S. Lewis don't need. Vivan los tamales which I mean might seem like strange because it's about food and when have I expressed you know that I'm a food scholar never but I did take a food class and I made like a food video biography project and I used this book and I actually think I'm going to take this because it's relevant for a project that I'm working on. Then I have The Evolution Creation Struggle by Michael Ruse, which is another one that is like the Midgley one. I got both of these for a class that I took and this was assigned. I don't think I need it though. I don't think I need it right now. Then I have some plays that I might want to take but it's like a very big space taker upper and that is William Shakespeare's The Star Wars Trilogy which is basically like Star Wars but rewritten in Shakespeare's like lingo slash language. I want to read them but this might be too heavy but I'll put it aside for now. Um, Then I have Shakespeare's The Merry Rise of Skywalker because that's my favorite Star Wars novelization and so but I don't need this right now because I want to read them in order so this is not a now problem. Um, then I have three plays, Death of a Salesman, The Crucible, and Mother Courage and Her Children, none of which are really like urgent, if that makes sense. I mean, are any of these really urgent? I don't know. I spy with my little eye some Star Wars novelizations, the original trilogy that's upside down, and two prequel books. I loved my experience reading these, but I'm not going to reread them anytime soon, so these can stay for now. Next, I have this sort of like souvenir copy of The Christmas Carol, which maybe, I don't know, if there's space, maybe I might want to take it just because it's like a nice souvenir item, but I probably don't need it, but I'll put it in the maybe pile. Like Water for Chocolate, maybe, I don't know, I wanted to like read it in Spanish, so maybe, I don't know. Misery by Stephen King, don't need. Withering Heights by Emily Bronte. Um, I reread it all the time, but not now. Not now, I don't think. <laughs> Am I gonna take this five pound brick of a book? It by Stephen King. Absolutely not. That's the number one book that no, I no, I'm not gonna break my back for this book. I have an entire video where I read this book, a reading blog, and it was a journey that I don't really want to take anytime soon again. You had me at Ola. I really loved this, um, but if I ever want to reread it, first I want to read A Lot Like Adios, which came out a whole entire year ago and I haven't read it. So if I take this with me, that'll enable me to just reread it and not read the other book that I want to read. So no. Ahsoka, which is a Star Wars novel that I haven't read, but am I going to read it in the near future? Maybe. I don't know. I'll put it aside. Maybe. We'll see. This is sort of the growing maybe pile. Phantom of the Opera is actually one that I do want to read this year, so I'm gonna put that in the maybe pile. Um, the Sun Also Rises. I've read this. I do want to reread it just because I feel like I want to give Hemingway a second chance, but I'm probably not gonna do that right now. I probably would read um, A Movable Feast first. The Handmaid's Tale. I actually forgot I owned this. Not because I didn't enjoy it, but just because I forgot that I owned a physical copy. So if I forgot I owned a physical copy, I don't need it right now. Jaws. I want to read Jaws, so maybe, but I don't know. Um, Psycho by Robert Block, which is one of my favorite books, and I would like to think that I'm going to reread it for Halloween, but no, probably not. Can't have that mindset when we are only taking two suitcases and a backpack. You may be thinking at this point, Valerie, are you going to take us through every single book you own? And the answer is no, I am not. I have already gone through my childhood books, decided that I don't really need any of them at the moment. I've decided that I don't need my anthologies at the moment because they are very heavy, probably not all that necessary. And there are a couple of stacks of books that I decided that I don't need. So with that being said, we're just going to continue. Robert Frost's poems, maybe. This literary criticism book, Arno Stromo, I need right now. Um, Dependency and Development in Latin America is another one that I need right now. So there's that. Um, The Underdogs by Mariano Azuela, um, want to read. So perhaps. Pedro Paramo by Juan Rulfo, another one that I want to read, so maybe pile. No One Writes to the Colonel by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, maybe. Passage to India, yes, because I want to read it. Um, Lord of the Flies, yes, I'm going to read that soon. Um, Blue Beard by Vonnegut, maybe. Lord Jim by Joseph Conrad, probably. Um, the Queen's Shadow and The Queen's Peril are two Star Wars books that follow Padme. It is a series, and while I do want to read it, um, 
am I going to read it right now? Probably not. Um, one that I probably am going to read is Percy Jackson's A Titan's Curse, which is the Percy Jackson number that I'm on. The Fellowship of the Ring is one that I can't really decide, um, but probably not. I'm just going to be honest with myself and say that I'm probably not going to read it. I'm going to see a performance of Much Ado About Nothing, so this is a yes. Macbeth, probably because I need to, and then I can probably leave behind um, King Henry V, Taming of the Shrew, and Love's Labor's Lost for now. Heart of Darkness I might need. It also has some short stories. Cyrano is one that I want to read, so maybe. Um, Nostromo I need still. It's such a beat up copy, but I need it right now. Edward Said's Beginnings, Intention, and Method is just a book that I probably will need to reference, so this is one that I'm keeping. And so now we are left with a pile of maybes, pretty much, which is maybe where I should have started the video instead of taking you along with all of these other random books. I want to get it down to like, I don't know, like 15 books max is what I want to take in my sort of luggage that I'm taking to the airport. Any more than that is kind of a lot. Okay, if I'm being honest, I probably don't need William Shakespeare's Star Wars trilogy right now. It's just too heavy for the airport. I probably don't need The Bedford's Companion to Shakespeare. Let's just be honest, I don't think I need it. Um, Jane Eyre for Sentimental Reasons, don't need. So let's just put that one aside. Dubliners, another one. Wishful Thinking at best. Bluebeard by Vonnegut, I don't know. Probably not. Like Water for Chocolate, probably not right now. I probably don't need the souvenir copy of A Christmas Carol either. Que vivan los tamales. Mm, I mean, if I'm being honest, probably not right now, so I'll just put that aside. And I'm not, like, moving to Mars, so I mean, if I find that I just have the sudden urge to read any one of these books, I need to keep in mind that uh, I am not moving to Mars and I can get it shipped to me and it'll come when it comes in the mail and I don't need to have such instant, you know, like all of this with me. Um, The Souls of Black Folk, mm, I don't think I need it right now. The Big Knockover by Dashiell Hammett, although I would like to say that I need it, I don't. Wow, this is actually going a lot better than I thought. What I have, okay, you're gonna laugh at me, but this is what I have so far in books that I like need, need. No One Rides to the Colonel, again, another one, probably not. Percy Jackson, I kind of want to just take just because, I don't know, I think it's going to be a comforting read, which might be something that I just need in the midst of all of this like change and just a lot, so maybe. Romeo and Juliet and A Midsummer Night's Dream. Sarah and I have some plans to buddy read Shakespeare. I think we are going to read A Midsummer Night's Dream. I should actually just ask her. Again, I act like I'm on Mars cut off from every human connection. I can ask and so this will be put in the maybe pile. Um, Dashiell Hammett, The Continental Off. I needed this for a specific page number in the introduction for something that I was working on, um, but I don't think I need to have it because I have the page number and I don't need to like be freaked out that somehow, some way I'm going to need it. So I'm just going to take chance and just put it aside. The Love Hypothesis, there's actually another Allie Hazelwood coming out that I'm going to read so I don't think I need this right now even though I have sort of wanted to just reread it just for a comfort read. Uh, but I don't think I will. Okay, I don't think I will. Yeah, I'm going to read something different instead of just reading the same book. Upon further reflection, I don't need Ahsoka either. Sound of the Baskervilles in the Valley of Fear, no, don't need that right now. Um, Jaws, maybe next summer, not this summer. Now we have a too large pile of maybes. I can't even like lift it, like this is what we're working with, which is too many, I think. I don't think I need Robert Frost's poems right now. That's probably not a priority. I am not your Mexican daughter is actually kind of tricky. I was really loving it. I know I even I raved about it in a vlog and then I just stopped reading it. And I don't really have the desire to pick it up again right now, which is hard because that kind of feels to me like a DNF. I don't know if I need to take up suitcase space to bring it if I'm not feeling it right now, especially because I've been in sort of a reading slump. I don't want to just put myself deeper into that slump. So I don't know about that one. Um, Macbeth, I probably don't need if I already have much ado about nothing. I probably don't also need Macbeth, right? Actually, I don't know. I kind of want it. Okay, we'll just keep this in the maybe pile. Okay, Heart of Darkness and Selected Other Short Fiction. I can probably find this online. I don't think I need it. Um, The Phantom of the Opera. As much as I would like to say that I'm going to read it soon, I'm probably not, so maybe I should just be honest with myself, but also it's small, so maybe I should just keep it. Saeed's beginnings slash in beginnings, intention, and method. Oh boy, this one's hard because I did, I used it for something and I might have to like refer to it, but I think I can find enough just on 
Google Scholar, like on the Google book preview, I think it gave me about 50 pages. And I think what I used was actually in the free preview. So I don't think I need beginnings right now. I think this might be one that I have shipped to me but i it's pretty big is the problem and so with that we are left with this reasonable stack i think of books this sort of stack i think this will be what i pack um and they all just fell thank you for coming along with me i will see you in the next update This is going to be the final update. I have just read How Much Land Does a Man Need by Leo Tolstoy, which is the other short story that has probably been on my TBR for the longest. And I said in an earlier clip that I was in a sort of like reflective mood. Maybe don't read or maybe do read short stories by classic Russian authors because boy oh boy we have another one that really just got me I think. This one follows this man who, when we open, he offhandedly says, oh, if I only had enough land, I wouldn't be afraid of the devil. And the devil hears this. And it basically just follows him getting more and more land and never being content. And I think that's sort of the main thing is that he's never happy. It's never enough. Um, and then the ending of this short story in particular was so good, I thought. It really sort of unsettled me. It made me think, but I can't talk about that because it would be a spoiler. But just the land never being enough, this man constantly seeks more. He gets however many acres and then he finds that he can get more acres somewhere else. And so he picks up and leaves, picks up and leaves, and it's never enough. And it, it's kind of like the overcoat, I guess. Not really, but I mean, just in what I was talking about earlier about how it's always something, it, you know, it's, it's always the next thing and so it sort of leaves the question of like where are we going to seek fulfillment and where are we going to seek our happiness are we going to seek it in things like land or things like an overcoat or things that you just get and it doesn't really fulfill you you know they're just things land is just it's all just things if that makes sense I think both stories sort of leave open the question again of where do we get deeper fulfillment and both of them seem to me to propose that it's in something a little bit deeper um so that's what i got from these two again if you are in a reflective mood these are great stories maybe also the worst stories because do i need these sort of reflections added to the already sort of reflections that i'm having by my own self I don't know, but I am glad that I read both of them. They are two short stories that I have had on my TBR, again, for quite some time. I've come on here time after time and said, I want to read How Much Land Does a Man Need. Haven't read it, and it was only 10 pages. That's the thing with short stories is that they're so short, and yet I never read them. I think what it is is that I used to think I would have to read like a short story collection cover to cover, and so that inhibited me because I never wanted to do that. But I'm breaking out of that. I read The Overcoat, which was the last story in the collection. And then I read this one, which was right in the middle of the book. So I'm breaking out of that. I might continue reading more, but I actually think I've sort of had my fill of short stories that might have been enough for me because again there's just not enough time and while I did love both of these stories, it's not the payoff that I get while reading a novel, which I think is just the inevitable effect of only having 20 pages as opposed to a thousand or whatever it may be. But I am glad I read it because again it just made me think the main character in this is just constantly again chasing land and it's never enough. And I think the actual title is very interesting and if you read this I would just suggest that you think about the title a little bit as you're reading because how much land does a man need has multiple meanings I think that changes throughout the course of the story. It sort of starts as rhetorical because the man is sort of saying oh if only I had a lot of land I wouldn't be afraid of the devil and how much is that amount I think is what it starts off with and then the answer sort of changes as he gets more land never enough it needs to be more and more and more and then the final answer to the question is wow I think so I would recommend that you read this story I really liked it it's interesting to see what Tolstoy does with the short story because I've only read Anna Karenina and War and Peace which are huge huge books 
And so I would be curious to see what else he could do with the short story. I would also be curious to read more from Goggle now that I've read The Overcoat. But with that being said, I think that is all for this vlog. I know it was mainly just me packing books. That's sort of been like representative of the state of things. A lot of my time has just been taken up with all the little things that go into moving that you don't think about. I mean, I know this sounds silly, but even like I forgot that I had to make an appointment to get my driver's license changed to the new state that I'm moving to. And so there were no appointments and so I had to make an appointment for one that's like 50 miles away. Um, so things like that, all those little things that you don't think about until you are forced to do them. And I guess that's how you know you're becoming an adult is when you have to do all of those little tedious things that you don't think about. Just like going to the DMV or like ordering your mattress from Wayfair, all of these like little things that are just like not a lot in singularity, but when you take them in totality, it is like oh my goodness, like when are these little things going to stop? And so my reading has sort of taken a hit because of just that, I think. I've also just been trying to enjoy the last two months I will have in my childhood home slash the state I grew up in. And so I'm trying to just enjoy that as much as possible. And so that is sort of why I haven't been reading as much as maybe I initially thought I would. I know I had a very ambitious summer TBR, but I'm glad I took the time today to do this reading vlog and to read some short stories that I've been wanting to read for a while. I do really enjoy making reading vlogs and I don't want to stop altogether just because my reading has taken a little bit of a hit. But anyway, I'm just rambling now. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.